hi guys so for this video this week i'm gonna go over ng tube insertion i know this week that we've been kind of going over different lines different drains a patient may have so today we're going to go over how to properly insert an ng tube okay and of course as always always check with your hospital policy before you do any intervention just to make sure you are aware of exactly what is required of you for your job in your specific um, facility okay so here are some supplies that you will need if you are to insert an NG tube. Of course, first and foremost, you're gonna make sure that you do have a physician's order um, and you know exactly why the patient is getting an NG tube and also you wanna know their history. Um, some of the things that you wanna, you wanna know about the history is if maybe patient has history of any trauma. You wanna make sure that there's no contraindication to inserting a tube inside their nostrils, okay? And another thing that you would want to consider is asking the patient exactly what, you know, which nostril that they will feel more comfortable with having a tube. Maybe they probably have one nose, one nair that they're able to breathe a little bit better on. Of course, we don't want to occlude that nair, so you definitely want to check with them exactly which nair that they would prefer to have that tube placed, okay? So these are the supplies that you will need. Of course, you will need the actual, this is a gastric stump tube. And of course, that depends on your orders because some patients, they may have a Dalhoff and they may have a completely different tube. But for this purpose of educating, we're going to be doing the Salem stump and use a gastric tube, okay? And also, you're going to have some lube. The reason for the lubrication is just for insertion, just to make sure it gives, you know, comfort to your patient because putting in a tube is definitely not comfortable for them. You're also going to have tape because you're going to, uh, for you to secure the tube once it's placed. And also, we're going to have the actual irrigation tray. So what's inside of this tray is you're gonna have your plunger and everything that you'll need just so you can put in some output or put liquid in there so you can irrigate the tube, okay? So this is the supplies that you'll need. And of course, identifying your patient and let them know exactly what you will be doing. So, and let them know what you're gonna be expecting during the procedure, okay? So, with everything that we do in the intervention, just make sure that you are washing your hands first. Let's just say I already washed my hands, and I do have my gloves. This is not a sterile procedure, and just know the abdomen is definitely not sterile, so you don't have to worry about that. Just put on some clean gloves. And the first thing that we're going to do is actually measure exactly where we're gonna want the NG tube to be. This one already have a piece of tape because my students were practicing, so just pretend that's not already there. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure from the nose, behind the ears, and then you're going to go down until the side foot process, okay? And this is usually the marker for where your, in, uh, your NG tube is going to be inserted. And one of my students, of course, already marked this, so this is why the tape is there. But having a tape there is really helpful and just knowing exactly where you want your tube to, to land, okay? So now we're going to be inserting the NG tube. Just, of course, like I said, we already told the patient what we're going to be doing. Um, another thing that we can have there that I did not mention is if your patient is not NPO, if they're able to drink, you can get like a cup of water um, with also with a straw so they can, you know, when the actual, when you start to insert the tube, they're able to drink, that way it can help facilitate the tube to go down, okay? So we're going to be putting the tube. We're going to insert it first. We're going to have the loop. This is a mannequin, I'm not really going to be putting lube in there, but of course we're going to put the lube. The head, of course having the head up. If your patient is not able to support the head, you're gonna have to really secure it for them. You're gonna go down. And once it gets kind of like behind the throat area, you're gonna have them put their head down and you can have them to swallow. The swallow, swallow, swallow. It really can be really hard to put in, but, and of course, you're gonna watch the patient to make sure they're not coughing, they're not turning blue, there's no signs of discomfort. It's a mannequin, so it's not gonna go in as easy, but we're getting there. 
Like I said, I'm assessing my patient, looking at them to make sure they're good. So there we go, it's there. So now at this point, just you know, checking them out to make sure there's no coiling of the actual tube behind the patient's throat. And we also, like I said, we're checking to see if the patient's uncomfortable. They may feel a discomfort because this is not comfortable, but we wanna make sure, of course, the tube doesn't land in the lungs because that would be really bad, okay? So what we would do, sorry, this mannequin doesn't really stay straight, but what we should have have done is having a piece of tape that was already ready. So just note that you'll be doing that before you actually insert your tube. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a little slit. And with that, we're going to go ahead and put it in the nose area. And we're going to be kind of wrapping the tape around the actual tube. Just to help secure it and put it in place. All right? And sorry, this mannequin does not stay straight, but we're going to we're going to be with this, play with it. And of course you can probably add a little bit of extra tape in the nose just to help to secure it even more, okay? So you have your tube. What you're going to do now is making sure that you're actually assessing the lungs. And also you're going to be making sure that you're gonna check the color of the actual output that's coming out and just to make sure that it is actually in the abdomen, but for the most part, whatever facility that you're in, the gold standard to check for the NG2 placement is going to be a chest x-ray. So just make sure that you do a chest x-ray before you give any medications or you put the tube to feeding. You might wanna make sure that your chest x-ray was done, okay? Also, if it is ordered to suction, you wanna make sure that your suction was already set up on the wall and just know that whether the suction is supposed to be continuous, if it's supposed to be um, intermittent, then you're gonna be able to put that set up and then you're gonna connect this to suction, okay? This portion here is what you're going to be connecting to the actual suction catheter. So it could go into the actual suction canister, okay? Um, I do not have this um, uh, locus valve with me, but it's not uncommon in your facility to have a locus valve, especially if the patient is connected to feeding. It's like a three, it's like a three-way stopcock that, you know, it looks like a three-way stopcock is going to be attached to the actual tube where you're able to go ahead and, you know, insert the tubing to the feeding. And also you have an extra port that you're able to either, you know, flush and also you're able to insert medications if needed, okay? Another really important part about this that I did not mention is the actual tube. Just know that the actual stump area, the blue portion, we are not inserting any fluids. It even tells you in there, infuse air only. So only air is gonna be going in through the blue area and fluids, medication and feeding goes through the actual tubing, which is the clear portion here, okay? And also this portion is the air vent, the filter. So just make sure that you're checking this um, every shift to make sure that it is not wet and it's not soiled because if it is, then you're gonna have to change it and put a brand new one. And most of the time it's found in your central supply or it's already in your clean utility. All right, so that's it for chest tube. Just one more thing, just also check with your irrigation tray and also check with your tubings. Normal hospital policy is we have to change this every 24 hours, check to see what it is for yours. And also, if the patient is still feeding, just make sure that you're checking the time that the feeding was placed. And it's normally the same 24 hours for the feeding because it is very concentrated, glucose, and it puts you at risk for infection. So just making sure that you are changing it based on your hospital policy. All right, well, thank you guys, and I hope you learned. I love you. Thank you for being here.